This video is brought to you by Squarespace, but we will talk about that later. In this Blender tutorial, we are gonna make a wireframe viewer, which is important because every method under the sun in YouTube is a bit of a hack. And the default wireframe node in the shader editor is pretty good, but it has these diagonals and you can't get rid of them. And because this tutorial is a bit advanced, I just wanted to make an animation for kind of the theory of how we're gonna do this. The effect we're going for is we want to take every single face and basically make this outline that we can then stick back onto our mesh. And here is how we are going to do it. We are going to take our mesh and separate it by face so each one is acting individually. We are then going to use the normal vector to rotate it back so that it is pointing upwards. I basically want to overlay this on the XY plane so that I can put this in a position where it's easy to apply the information we need. And then we just send it back to the mesh. This sounds simple in theory, but there's a few complications. If you wanna get the complete and refine tool, that's gonna to have a step above of what we're talking about here. That's gonna be available at B3D Tools, or if you just want the thing exclusively, there's also a product for that. But let's get 90% of the way there ourselves. We're gonna start off with a mesh that is completely composed of quads, just to make it easy for us. And we are gonna make this a Geo Nodes object. And like I said, the first thing I want to do with this mesh is separate it by face. If I try to separate these by default, so I'm going to set position and offset by the normal, which is unique to every face. The thing is, everything stays connected, right? There's no separation. And that's because every single face, if there's two kind of consecutive adjacent ones, they share some vertices and edges, which we don't want to happen. Luckily, there's a good node for this. It's called split edges. And you can see uh, each face is now acting independently. The first thing we want to do is we want to take each face, which remember our end goal is to map it to the XY plane, kind of like we're doing a UV unwrap, but procedurally. And the first thing we need to do for that is we need to take this orientation, which is going in a kind of random normal direction and point it upwards. Here is how we are going to do that. If we have a polygon, which in this case is a quad that is going in this normal direction, to orient it so that it's going upwards, we can think of this normal vector less so as a vector, but more so as a rotation that we want to undo. So we can take this normal and use a align Euler to vector, which is basically going to do our conversion into a rotation. Just make sure that this is set to Z. We are Going to use vector rotate. What do we want to rotate? The original position. It's going to be centered the rotation at the center of the face. So to get the center of the face, we are going to use position, but this time we are going to isolate it to uh, the face. So we're evaluating the position on the face. That's going to be the center. We can change this over to Euler coordinates and then plug in our rotation. Let's see what happens when we connect this straight away. Uh, you can see it is rotating each face individually, but they're not pointing upwards. And that's because we just need to do a inversion. Every single face is now pointing upwards. And then we want to center them on the XY plane, something like this. This is super easy to do. We are gonna set position again, and every single face that we look at individually is now pointing upwards, but the center of it is somewhere in space instead of over at the origin. So we just look at where the face center is and then move it backwards, inverse uh, by that direction. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to scale it by minus one to say, just like the inversion of the rotation, go backwards. And now every single face is centered. Uh, perfectly. Of course, each one's going to have kind of this random orientation because while we have made it point upwards, that doesn't say like how much are we orbiting, like there's still a degree of freedom. So this is what we want to undo. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated if it wasn't already. So imagine that we have a face that is now on the XY plane to get from here to here instead of a rotation, since we're probably gonna skew and shear coordinates anyways, you can think of this transformation as mapping each vertex to 
where it's supposed to be. So the bottom right corner over here is mapped to the bottom right corner, top left goes to the top left, etc. If we find this transformation, then we're golden. However, since we don't know which vertex is which, we might run into the issue where instead of a square, we end up with something like this, where we do have the four vertices, but the order is not correct, right? It needs to somehow go clockwise or counterclockwise. We need to know something about its angle relative to the x-axis so that as I sweep around this, uh, we are going around kind of the face. We can sort elements where now if a face has kind of like a random scrambled indexing, so it goes like zero, one, two, three, instead of like a perfect circle, we can now recast or reassign these numbers so that they go zero, one, two, three. And I want to sort by elements with a group ID of the face index. So I'm going to use the index here. I'm going to evaluate this on a domain so that we know that we are dealing with a face. In other words, we are sorting elements, but each face is handled individually. And now we need to create some kind of algorithm or some kind of sort weight that tells us which one should be first, second, third, and fourth. To do this, we basically take a gradient texture, which has its own radial map that tells us what angle are we dealing with and just take this and connect it to the sort weight which doesn't visually change anything but as i disconnect this and connect this you can see some indexing is changing so i'm going to set position uh, for which one? Well, each face has four vertices that are now sorted. So let's start with like the zeroth one. And then we go to the first, the second, the third. So I can take the index of this and take the modulo or floored modulo. It doesn't really matter what kind of modulo you take. You have a couple options. Uh, we are going to take this mod four so that this outputs a number that is either zero, one, two, or three. And we say we're going to take this and see where it is equal to zero. For each face, again, independently, we're looking at the first or the zero with vertex and for this selection, I can explicitly set the position to the bottom left corner. So zero, zero, zero. We literally just repeat this process. So I'm gonna make another set position. In this case, I'm gonna check where this is equal to one. And under that condition, maybe we can go to the right in some sense. So we had our original zero, zero, and now let's go to one, zero, where it's progressed along the x-axis. So I'm gonna set this to one. And now you can see, if I zoom out, we have our first vertex, our second vertex, and now we wanna set the top right and the uh, top left corner. And just to be clear, what we've done here is we've done a procedural UV mapping that is equivalent to taking every single face and then hit U so that we could do a reset unwrap and every single face is mapped to this uh, perfect square. So let me just do a little animation so we can see what is going on here. We took this mesh and then did a transformation uh, where it's now on this uh, XY plane. Or the reason we're doing it procedurally is as I add geometry, it doesn't actually matter because it's still going to be mapped over here. All I'm going to do is I'm gonna save this data as store named attribute. Literally all we need is the position coordinates, which happen uh, to look a lot like a UV coordinates. So I'm gonna call this um, transformation. And then the final step is bringing it back to where it was originally. So by going back to the beginning, we're gonna store the original position and we're gonna call this original. And let's see if this works because we did kind of resort the elements. We care about the original, we're gonna set it to position. That seemed to work. Basically all we've done is we started with a mesh we ended with the same mesh, but now it has attribute information, which we can actually view. And now you can see each face has its own it looks exactly like a UV coordinate system. Now, you're gonna notice that some of these are kind of like upside down. So here you can see the black corners on the top left. Here you can see it's on the bottom left, but it doesn't matter because it's uh, symmetrical. So whereas the wireframe node, which is given to us, gives us this, but we can't get rid of that freaking diagonal. Now we can recreate this ourselves. So I'm gonna take attribute. We care about the transformation coordinates. We separate X, Y, Z 
So X, again, some of these are going to be flipped. It doesn't matter. X gives us this. Y gives us the perpendicular direction. I'm going to take, I'm going to take math compare. I'm going to kind of pick something like this. So you can see we're getting our lines. Let's see. So we have two of these and we want to kind of combine their black lines in a sense, or we could invert it. But if we're trying to combine black lines, we're trying to take the minimum where it's small, where it's black in both cases. I've taken the minimum and now we have this wireframe that just works. By the way, if you're like, this is inverted, just invert the color. If I inset, if I extrude, the wireframe is there. This probably isn't set up for triangles at the moment. Oh, seems to work. No, that seems pretty good actually. And yeah, there's more work to do with normalization and all that, but that gets you 90% of the way there. You just wanna normalize based on uh, edge length. Either way, the completed version with more features is available in my pack that I'm just adding more to, again, called B3D Tools. And that's a good segue because this video is sponsored by Squarespace, which helps you make beautiful websites. And my B3D Tools promotional website is made with Squarespace. Three things that are cool about Squarespace Space is it has analytics so you know who is going to your website, which in my case matters because I'm trying to see who is getting this product. Second of all, you have a asset library so you can see my website has all these GIFs and images. All of that is saved into kind of like the cloud of Squarespace of the website. Thirdly, Designing is super simple. You just drag around elements, which is good because I'm continuously updating the uh, website. Head over to Squarespace, design a website, and when you're ready to take that website live, you could use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain.